Hey, how you doing? Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, what's up? What's good? What's all together? It's your girl, Cran K. I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're Stella. And I hope you're in a neat little bunch. If you're not, welcome to the party. That's just the story of our unfortunate lives. Um, it's the last days, so I guess nothing really works, right? Anyway, so let me just put my caveats out there. Kindly look out for my captions. They're not always accurate. They sometimes use a small g for God. So they're not very reverential and they are sometimes misspelled. There's all these different kinds of weird, little weird things going on there. But we're not going to be editing them because I don't have time. I just, I literally don't. Okay. Uh, and I also don't have an incentive yet. One day when my ministry grows, God willing, uh, should we have like a whole future because the rapture has not yet happened, I will invest in uh, correcting them. Secondly, I'm very potentially wearing application makeup. Um... <clears throat> If I am, you'll know. If I am not, you'll also know. I am putting this caveat out there because it just, it like bounces off my face. I'm not shape-shifting. Let's just put that out there. Okay. And then thirdly, I have this like segment uh, where, yeah, okay. So like I also have a, a fading pimple. Uh, I have this segment where I pinch my cheeks essentially to cause a, a, a blush. And the reason I do that is in order to display that I'm human. I've got blood in my body. When you prick me, I bleed. When you punch me, I say, ouch. When you roll over me with a steamroller, I don't, I don't make it. I don't live. I'm a human being totally, but people are treating me, unfortunately. That is just so sad. Like I am a Dumbo that does not get to live. So we pinch our cheeks to show them that, hey, I'm human. That should they make a decision to continue in this ridiculous state, they will have to face my God in heaven who said, love your neighbor and they're not loving me. Anyway, whatever, like whole total boring thing there. I just keep this segment because it's my intro and I'm sticking to it. One day I'll have chapters. Okay, cool. The intention is to blush my cheeks. Some days it works, other days it doesn't. I don't really know what's the deal. I think it's just when like I'm feeling some kind of way that it works or not. But like maybe it's my moisturizer. Look, I really at this point I just I don't care. I don't we don't care. Alrighty, so today's the 21st of April 2024. It's actually the 20th, but I am hopping into the next morning. It's the wee hours of the morning right now. I prefer to speak at this time these days because it's late less distracted there's less noise on the outside less people walking around less chatter less eavesdropping it just works okay so we just carry on anywho so uh i don't intend to be wrapping on for too long right here because it's weekend and i really want to give myself some kind of a semblance of a break on the weekends like speak for like 20 minutes and i don't exercise so. <sighs> sorry I don't exercise on weekends, so that is a, a sort of a break, but I also just want more of a break, you know, like more of it. Uh, so I'm not going to labor. Plus, I did not really get bombarded, showered with too much nightmarish understanding uh, this this past evening, because every so often God gives me a break from all of like, this dastardly activity in the kingdom of darkness. Uh, and a, a lot of my messages tend to be encircled around what it is that the Lord is showing me is going on in that kingdom. So I didn't really see much, but I am tired. So let's just put that out there. One sekey. Yeah, okay. I was, uh, what was I doing? I was doing edits, okay, in the background. That's why I said one sekey. Uh, what is actually happening right now? Remember you guys, I told you, yeah, of course, like me recording at this time of the morning is going to come with lots of yawns and stuff. I'm under so much demonic attack. Anyway, look, I, uh, 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 my shorts, especially the ones that I record in the car. You will recall there was a time when I said in my ministry that I'm just going to actually drop a whole bunch of shorts in my blog, in my ministry, because whether I'm with min with minimum, minimum editing, I'm just going to make sure that I do minimum edits. Uh, to get as many out as I possibly can because uh, I'm, I'm going to retract I'm gonna moonwalk backwards like Michael Jackson and stop doing so much editing to add effects and all different kinds of stuff to make them more engaging well it appears I just I can't help myself I cannot help myself I can't help myself like yeah today I, I was just inside a short and I just felt like mm -mm, it needs more it needs more and so I'm back to editing at my leisure and I'm just giving it to God at this point because I don't want my work to be compromised because I'm out here just like freaking out running away from the kinema darkness today I went to out there in the wilderness I barely ever go out there in the wilderness you guys know that and guys you're like I am you're at the level of demonic attack my goodness <sighs> I'm sorry for yawning all up in your grill. This is not going to be a long video. I don't anticipate it will be. Mm. Yo, guys. That's like it, but... Huh. 
it was when I was out there in the wilderness that I realized just how severe the demonic attack on me is. I'm generally sort of kind of, you know, um, localized in this domicile, this small little patch of region where I stay. Um, so yeah, because of my limited mobility, left and right, in terms of where I go, I don't really feel the full scope of what it is that I am experiencing. The full scope of what is the demonic attack. So I'm actually quite impressed at the fact that I've been able to do exercise at all with this level of demonic abuse. All up in my grill. Guys, just the fact, like just being out there in the wilderness, basically walking strides like a whole 300 meters, a whole 200, 100 meters in, in, a, in public society. Shoo. Yes, like it. It's it's like I was underwater swimming. I I was at the disc cam at some point. I, it's also it's almost as if I couldn't even feel my feet on the floor as I was walking. And I was like, what in the world are these people thinking? Like they're out of their minds to endure people through this. That's why so many people die when they have been bewitched. When occult magic is in operation, this stuff is so heavy that. If you get a, like I told you guys that I got attacked yesterday, I explained quite the barrage, okay? In a two part series where I was explaining basically cockroaches, like an infestation, like a whole like fumigation needing antic in the kingdom of darkness, how it is that I've been targeted by what I would imagine to be covens. <laughs> lots and lots of occult practitioners all in one sitting, thinking that they're gonna go and pursue, pull in with a jersey and everything, a person and prevent them from going where it is that God would have them go. And I use the example of the people of God leaving Egypt, the Hebrews, and how it is that those who pursued them were swallowed whole by an ocean. They were swallowed by the Red Sea. I spoke about that. Um, and I told you what dream it was that the Lord used to show me that, that barrage, that demonic attack. And it was critters, a whole bunch of bugs, you know, scorpions, weird little animal, like insects, yeah, whole bunch of them everywhere. And I spoke about how it is that the battle is not mine. It belongs to God. I don't have to fumigate. That was yesterday's video. Well, today I am walking. I walked out there in the wilderness for the first time since that particular spell or those spells, that barrage from that many people. <laughs> Guys, I, I could not feel it. It's like my, my feet felt thumpy on the ground. Like they were not supposed to be walking. I felt heavy. Yes, my body is sore because I've been working out, but goodness gracious, like even if you feel sore because of exercise, you should still be able to feel yourself and also feel the atmosphere around you, especially when you've slept eight hours soundly. All that hurts are your muscles, but you, you, you don't necessarily feel like a log walking around. You don't feel like, like you're underwater, like you're resisted, like you are in some nebulous, weird, otherworldly space. And like, guys, what, it's just, you oh, the demonic, the demonic abuse. And there's also, uh, yeah, the, to basically, like, they're trying to block me from going to where I need to go. And I'm just, I'm gonna go, okay? But never mind that. I also keep getting nightmares of, uh, one second. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, officially now, I'm not looking there anymore because I'm done. I keep getting nightmares of, I don't know if you guys have seen the movie Temptation. You know, Harley? The guy that tempts Judith, yeah, he, he like he's HIV positive, he sleeps with her, they mess with her husband's heart. She ends up divorced, blah blah, having contracted the virus, because she cheated on her husband with that dude and she was a Christian that compromised her values and whatnot and ended up in that like weird little space, okay? Yeah, I keep getting flash visions of Harley, Harley, Harley from the movie Temptation. A guy that has a whole bunch of money uh, and seduces an innocent country girl or an innocent blasey girl, a rural chick, seduces her even though she's got a husband and knowingly infects her with HIV and tells himself that he's in love, he doesn't care because at the end of the day he's gonna get his, he's gonna get what he wants. I, yeah, I keep getting flash visions of Harley so very many times and I've been thinking that Harley represents because God is showing me that there's a man like that all up and like attempting to sort of kind of slip into my particular space. And I've been thinking that he's talking about the dude from America, but he can't be. It's not that. And God has been highlighting to me that that's not what's going on. The man from America was a form of a Harley, but not entirely because he was not wealthy. He was not a wealthy guy. And I keep seeing this some wealthy dude 
you know how in in the movie temptation judith gets enabled to set up a a practice like she gets bought some building she gets purchased some building in order to start her practice as a therapist and she's all happy because when she was with her husband bryce he kept on telling her after a couple of years maybe five she'll be able to start her business and she was like five years i want to start it now and this guy basically fast tracks judith's desires to get what she wants right now instead of waiting and getting it later and that's what makes her feel like this guy harley must be the one or whatever and she messes with her whole future her whole entire life i also keep hearing um in, on a loop the song by jasmine sullivan if i could forget him oh i i would please believe me exactly the one from the movie temptation they use it in the soundtrack and that song is about basically walking away from a, a, a decent guy in order to be with a not so decent guy but you can't help but be with him because something about him is just so electric that you can't walk away there is that there is a, a temptation of that nature i told you guys about that whole occult magic rubbish yesterday the whole cockroaches dream like a whole bunch of insects weird little animals insects insects okay there were like a, a barrage of them that came at me i told you about how i felt today dragging my body through life unable to really truly motion myself and i told you about the end of that dream how it is that as a result of me running away from all of these bugs running away from all of these spiders i ended up in the arms of some wicked man uh the arms of some dude wearing a, a bow tie uh, a, a baggy suit and it was all because i was just in flight from so many occult practitioners that i eventually accommodated one of them yeah well i have a feeling god is not a feeling i know that the lord is telling me that the person i guess that is earmarked to ultimately be my husband by the occult like well you know people planning people's plans anyway the person that is earmarked to be my husband is a harley a, a harley like character from the movie temptation because god keeps on flash visioning me like no man's business with that particular storyline never mind that but especially the part where judith is bought some industrial site a building in order to basically start her practice like what she wants to do this guy was buying her an office space that that whole that particular scene in temptation god is just flashing it flashing it flashing it in my eyes on some they there is an attempt essentially to try and slip you quick wins through a man that is going to give you what you want now today in bountiful measure and that you will make you feel as if though this is it this is it this is it whatever and the be all and end all of a communique that god is letting me know is is the actual real deal with this particular weird guy is that just like harley in temptation he takes judith from another man and harley in and of himself is single right he is not married or engaged or anything like that in the movie he's the single guy that seduces a married woman god is telling me that these people from the occult these these darklings they are so desperate going back to the drawing board planning where you're concerned that they know that because of your your christianity your faith your values everything that you stand for that you are highly unlikely going to accommodate a married man or a divorced man you are highly unlikely going to accommodate that because you keep on lamenting about them you keep on lamenting about how they keep on throwing themselves at you and uh, uh, with the sorcery and on top of that kids you are highly unlikely also going to accommodate children like gen z's like ben 10s um basically young kids like these 10 years younger than i'm 39 that's what i'm getting at okay like these 27 year olds 26 year olds 25 year olds the most recent random corbella that i had a dream about was from some kid that i was speaking with on email and we were not fraternizing it was fellowship oh goodness no it was not fraternizing i was irritated by that exorbitantly because he was just so ent entirely absolutely and comprehensively naive anyway whatever um so th there is an awareness an acute one and that that i'm not going to be with a kid first and foremost secondly an acute awareness that highly unlikely going to accommodate a, a, a guy that's divorcing divorced married like basically st stats loss of them that i don't want yeah so now they're like planning literally to get me together and pivotal or central central to this strategy is this man like he in and of himself is involved in this like i told you guys i'm being targeted i might sound paranoid but i promise you this is not a lie I, like the kingdom of darkness works that way whenever they've got a problematic christians dwelling in their midst that are dealing with 
them as as an organization as organizations as bodies they will do everything in their power to neutralize these christians and if they can't kill them they try to mix them together with unbelievers they work very hard to mix them with unbelievers okay and so that is the strategy against me in particular and my singlehood has just made them kind of crazy this man is central in planning to make me settle for him and he is being rooted for by a lot of darkness a lot of darkness but what's imperative to understand is that his statistics are similar to those of Harley from Temptation. That's why God is using that movie. He is wealthy, single, never married, no children, total like darkling of note, entirely pompous, arrogant, and uh, of course, what is this? He's HIV positive. He is sick. He, he's HIV positive. He's on antiretrovirals, and all of his sorcery has not cured his little disease. My thing is anything to shatter my future and uh, the lord uses temptation in that movie because of the similarities that i would have had with judith i am espoused to jesus he is the man in my life right now i am single i don't have anybody i'm christian therefore just like judith i have a husband that has entered it basically asked told me to wait for him to bless me with what it is that i've waited on him for you know how bryce in the movie temptation says to judith yeah, babe, you will in five years get your practice running. Maybe five or ten years you'll have your practice running. And she's like, oh, five or ten years. And then Harley rocks up and just gives her everything like right here, right now. Yeah, type of Well, I've been waiting on God for so far a decade. And in terms of, well, in terms of persecution, to get out of this persecution, it's been a day, almost a decade. It will be around November. And however, however for the a husband, I've been waiting 13. One, three. One, three big years. Okay, over a decade. I've been waiting on the Lord for a husband since my last stable relationship. I entered into this, entered the faith, Christianity, that is out of a relationship. After after my ex and I broke up, I Im immediately became Christian because I was already investigating the things of God. And it's been 13 whole years. And that's a long time to wait for things that you have asked for in prayer. Anything at all, especially a husband, given that, you know, time, your youth flees, your womb rots all that stuff that you know global statistics say is a problem when you get older yeah all that stuff i'm looking at it of course and i am concerned for it and i am being looked at targeted by some darklings in the kingdom of darkness telling me your stupid husband has basically told you wait 13 years for a husband wait 10 years to get out of persecution wait however long to get what exactly it is that what are you what do you want Carabo? in this world what are your dreams what are your ambitions ambitions you you're not getting any younger you're not gonna get them this husband of yours this jesus of yours is busy rooting on you like basically cheering you on telling you be patient wait for me and you still have absolutely nothing all these years down the line well i am harley and i have a mansion i have a lamborghini i have a this i have a that he seduces the living daylights out of judith and ultimately judith capitulates because the the man somehow prospers to just slip into her heart he takes her on holiday you you know what happens in the movie temptation there's no need for me to labor on it i'm tired and this fatigue is not even natural because like i said i'm under attack i'm under a lot of attack but whatever okay i will conquer and i will prosper so there's the whole storyline and i don't even know how this person would even attempt to come into my space uh but like there is a big fat chunky strategy to basically connect me with some prolific man that is largely unscathed by all different kinds of things in history and for me like you know like stats and stuff like he is age appropriate blah blah all that jazz he's not a kid he's not a ben 10 he's not a gen z yeah, oh yeah, he's basically a man that would be appropriate for me in age and he his statistics are also like he doesn't have children, he does he's not married, he's never been married. Like yeah, but like he is a hard knock Satanist, a hard knock exquisite devil worshipper, like a deep, intense devil worshipper. And as I speak right now <laughs> as I speak right now, God keeps on flash visioning me with who he is. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> he keeps flash vision it like I think I know who it is now. You see, the Lord awards me with understanding as I speak. What? But I did say in that video that I spoke about that guy. I did say that this guy, what he's involved in is extreme. 
what his invo like he is he belo he's a very high order satanist he yeah the video that i did I, I i it was some the name the title of it could have been something like one second i actually want to look for it yes i found it i think i titled it and i don't think i adjusted the title once it was on youtube it's called when ghosts from history think their past nature protects them from being I have bad eyesight. Okay, you're gonna have to listen to me from there. When ghosts from history think their past nature protects them from being busted doing witchcraft. Yeah, that video, when I did it, I was basically giving you guys a dream of, of some... I was explaining some dude from the past that I was shocked was, was even looking at me. I was shocked was even watching my content. Um, I spoke about how it is that I, I, I used to attend vids with him and he was an entrepreneur at the time. He ended up low-key dropping out of this because he was too busy starting his own business blah blah some dude that i had a crush on he had a crush on me at the time i was dating my ex it looked as though he had a crush back on me but then he wasted his time dilly dally did not do anything about it ultimately we ended up working on the same project we we basically knew each other's names and numbers now and what have you uh in classes that we would attend together anyway whatever and I liked this guy. I liked him a lot, lot, lot. I, I had like big, big feelings for him. <laughs> and then I went on cyber stalking him because I liked him. And look, like long story short, you're gonna have to watch that video. Long story short, this is the long story short. I came to conclude that he was homosexual, that he was gay. I came to conclude that he was gay because there was just so much um, evidence of that on his Facebook. The crowd that he was hanging with looked very, very gay. Uh, and they were not just hanging out in the streets of Johannesburg, but they were also traveling overseas with each other as a crew of a very outwardly and overtly gay men. Anyway, that video, I, I, I did that particular blog, vlog, sorry, that video one, once I was looking for the date. It was around the 9th of April. I did that video around the 9th of, well, uh, I published it on my computer on the 9th of April. It was probably uploaded, therefore, on YouTube on the 10th of April. So go to around that date if you're interested in finding out. This thing, because right now as I'm speaking, God has been highlighting to me who this man is. God has been telling me who he is. I find it funny. I find it laughable. Yeah, this man was um, at some point a love interest in my life. But it didn't work out at all. It did not work out. Yeah. <laughs> and I told you that that dream that I had about him, it was so thick with spiritual oppression. It was so deep. It was so extreme. The spiritual oppression in it that it, it was nothing like I've, I'd ever experienced before in a dream. I was struggling to come out from it. In my dream, he was basically about to rape me and then I was woken up by my cat. I told you guys that please you're gonna have to watch that video i'm not gonna labor again now as i'm speaking god has just literally alerted me by a word of knowledge as i'm saying like he's just dropped the revelation in my mind only now <laughs> telling me that it's that guy i told you guys like some dude that i went to visit with that that had a double barrel name not a double barrel name but he was half black half either white or colored or something because he did not have a, a black surname but he had a a, a black na first name and, and his other name was was um was a non-black name it was like an english name and then in that second name <laughs> description of it described god like it, it, it's one of the names of god anyway whatever this dude i went to varsity with him and i dreamt about him all up in my grow that time and <laughs> you know the thing about witchcraft and attacks that come at you I, I sometimes feel as if though they, they should be manifesting or doing their thing as soon as i get the dream but then like a whole two weeks will progress three and only then the barrage of that kind of sorcery will start slapping me and i am being slapped by whatever that guy did he is the centerpiece he's the centerpiece of this whole sorcery yes like it man this guy's involved in something dark yes well he's involved in something extreme and from what god shows me he's harley because he's also hiv positive i don't even know how that happened why in under heaven has the lord highlighted that to me it's because i'm wondering where under heaven are you going to find a black man in these streets that is age appropriate older than me right appropriately by a good healthy two three four five years so basically a man in his 40s that's never been married what i'm waiting on god for a man that's never been married a man that's never had children a man that is essentially with a clean slate why under heaven with a man so satanic so dark a man so basically disinterested in 
honoring God, in being celibate, in keeping himself pure, in making sure he does not just spread his seed across these streets. A man that has no incentive to basically keep himself neat and his statistics. Men in the world don't care. They just keep making babies. They, they just, they don't care. They, like, they're not careful about that. They sleep around everywhere and every so often one of the women falls pregnant. Why under heaven would a man so deeply involved in the occult be in his 40s? And having never had children, especially for a black man, I'm sorry, it's quite typical in the black community for dudes to actually be making a couple of babies before they're married. Not all the time, but it is a typicality that is quite prolific in our community. I'm, I'm not, I'm not even trying to be derogatory. A truth is a truth is a truth, please. Like black people, you know how you be. So it's rare to find a black man in these streets at that age that's never married any woman and that's never had at least one baby mama, at least one. It's rare. It's rare. Which is why I just like, yeah, sometimes I look at God and I'm like, am I going to get married to a black man? Am I getting like, what's going on in these? Like, because like, I am too old to have a plethora of options in the black community, given how much, like I said, black people, y'all know, please, I'm not picking on you. Your stats are, are there. They are there, they are there, they are there. Stereotypes. You are properly swimming in them. Not every one of you is like that, I shall admit, but you do make a green quite a typical green out of your lives i'm just saying anyway this i i've been wondering where 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 is there gonna be a black man that ain't never had no children properly earmarked and pinpointed by the occult a man that has no conviction of sexual sin to not do that and a man that would somehow successfully avoid impregnating a woman until he's like 44 <laughs> Where would that come from? Where? <laughs> that guy was, yes, his birth date, he, he's, he's not even an 80s baby. I think he was born in 78 or 79. So he's like six, five or six years older than me. Okay. Um, <laughs> a man from, yeah, a man baby that's just been around that whole time <laughs> in the black community. They don't make them many fold. There's not a lot of, they, they're not plenteous. They're not teaming at the folds, single and unmarried and never been married at that age they just they aren't this yeah there's a thing about planting seeds in the black community it's like a whole muscle thing it's a yeah i can i can make babies thing it's it's a thing it's just it's like they have to have babies in order to feel like they're men yeah where why under heaven would a black man not do that when he has no conviction of sin no conviction of sexual sin no conviction of sex before marriage. Not, never mind. Say, yeah, I've already made mention of sex before marriage, but uh, children, you know, within a healthy, thriving environment raised by two parents that fear God. When a man is not guided by God, by Jesus, why would he end up like that? And <laughs> God just like popped it in my understanding on some garabo. This man has not been living a typical black male lifestyle. In that video, I described how it is that I found out he was gay. I discovered he was not even in the closet. He was a gay man. Obviously, outwardly so, I suspected it. And I expanded on that topic at length. I spoke about it at length. I spoke about it quite largely. Uh, what it is that I, I imagined was the solution to his issues. I, I implored him to repent. I didn't even know that he was looking at me. Please, like that video, you're gonna have to watch it. Like, I'm not even touching, I'm not gonna rehash things that I already spoke about. Okay, watch that video. That guy's the one that God is showing me is Harley. <laughs> if he's Harley, then I guess congratulations. <laughs> he made it. <laughs> he made it. The hard work that he was putting in when we were in school, he asked like it. He was working so hard to a point where he had to drop out for a couple of months or years from school because he could not juggle. He could not juggle both his business and school. And so he just disappeared from the scene. And I stopped seeing him. Uh, type establishment thing. Whatever it is that he was working like a dog on, it like, it made him Harley. Harley in the movie Temptation was a millionaire, like a, a prolific man. He was, yeah, he was wealthy. He was wealthy. And he made his riches young. Yeah, type set up thing. So that dude made it. <laughs> he made it. But unfortunately, he was also aided along by the occult. And precisely because of his prolific nature today, I don't even want to Google him to find out what's good. I don't care. Like, I just, I don't care. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. 
I want to know what it is that was this big fat chunky thing that he was working on that made it impossible for him to properly study. Like I just I don't want to know because it's it's obviously paid off. However, unfortunately, I believe that he did not just rely on his own sheer hard work and talent, but he also used the occult and now he is prolific, prolific enough to <laughs> charge or send out a petition or basically create like do a ritual like him and like he is this dude is deep he's heavy what he is involved in is exquisite it's it's deep it's he is high ranking that's what i'm trying to explain not just in the business arena because who cares but in the spirit space in the occult space in the occult arena he's huge he's like a head honcho he's like a boss or something in the occult that's why i'm under your gas like it fuck yeah i told you this dude is not it, it's not the guy from america if it was god would have shown me like yeah that guy has had gotten his hands pretty mightily dirty but uh, the, he does he, he is not a powerful man the dude from the u.s is not a powerful man at all the one that i saw in my dream was powerful the one that i saw in my dream yesterday the, the dream that i explained yesterday the occult, the hide knock magician bow tie wearing dude that was like it's almost as if the rituals done by multiple covens were done for him to get me they helping him to get me in the dream that i had the one that god gave me with the one with the way i recorded the videos speaking about ghosts from the past i spoke about how it is that i had successfully fled from a whole bunch of other witches and i drove to him i drove to him just to basically talk to him on some oh goodness i've been running away from all the stuff and that's exactly what happened in yesterday's dream not either, well, the one that i spoke i explained yesterday with many cockroaches critters bugs all over the show that i was fleeing from trying to squash in my hands and yeah i spoke about how it is that the battle is the lost thank god yeah in that dream the end result was also me running to a man running to a man but in this dream, I didn't see his face. But the other dream, I saw his face. And he came into my car and started to initiate rape. And my cat woke me up before it happened. She wanted to get out. Mm. The only... Yeah, it, it makes sense why that dude would be like Harley. Because all throughout his younger years, he wasn't messing with women. He was messing with men. He wasn't messing with women. That's why he has never been married. And that's why he's never had children because he was never messing with women. He was never messing with women and somewhere along the way he contracted the virus and now he wants me. I was like dude but like you're gay but then again I explained in that video that that dude had feelings for me despite being gay and he likely was wondering what in the world is going on with this woman and ignored me ignored what was going on in his heart where i'm concerned because i was an anomaly he wasn't supposed to feel this way about me because of his sexual orientation he was like will and will and grace the kind of gay man that you can't tell is gay i apologize mm, if i'm grossing you out i i'm sorry guys like yeah uh whatever yeah okay uh that's just i don't have dick room one day i'll get the dick room yeah the kind of man that that you would spaz over have strong feelings for end up falling in love with thinking that you all have something you're sharing chemistry and the only reason you fall in love so he head over heels is because he's mindful he's attentive he's all these things and then you discover that goodness of course he was mindful attentive and all that because he was gay <laughs> you know guy was like that <laughs> anyway i spoke about this dude i spoke about him he does like to shop share and the boy can dress it's like christian in the movie clueless i told you guys i told you guys and now as i'm speaking to you right here in this message the lord is telling me that it's him yo dude ah but hey you don't know who you're messing with like proper you're like i'm a i'm a christian like what like i'm sorry for your diagnosis like frankly it's tragic i'm sorry but like i am a woman of god i've been waiting on the lord for a husband for 13 years since the relationship that i nearly left for you <laughs> ended <laughs> i nearly left that guy for you i would have if you had initiated something but it didn't work out then and like yeah ain't no yeah yeah it's like it mm -mm -mm. one second god is, is just telling me so much yo guys anyway I'm a woman of God, dude. I'm a child of the living God. You were given an opportunity all those years ago to be with a woman because that was always your desire. 
you ignored your crush on a woman when that's just not what you were into and now you wish that you had listened to your heart back then so that you would have gotten to live what you call a normal life because you made an observation back in the day already that a uh, gay lifestyle they don't age well they don't age well like the, the gay lifestyle does not age well it only has glory in youth later on it just looks tacky it looks tacky and from early on you knew that you saw it and you you longed to have basically a wife and some children but you didn't have the desire and then you met a woman that you liked <laughs> and you didn't run with that <laughs> dude <laughs> Mm -mm. and then you want to rock up all these years down the line and take uh, the same chick now that she is unmarried and un unscathed untainted and you still have feelings for her you then want to go and grab her with i mean the chick has got like a whole clean bill of health she hasn't had sex in like 13 years she is healthy and you want to come with your stats and just take her what am I gonna do with you? Like, these guys with HIV, the guy from the US was HIV positive. It's like, you know I want children. Like, and on top of that, I haven't had sex in 13 years. Why would you want to just frustrate me with all that carefulness in, in intimacy in a relationship? Like, I don't want to have to be that super careful because I was careful by just being abstinent at all. So I get to marry a man with a clean build of health. I don't want to take medication. I don't want to be on prep because I'm with an HIV positive man. I don't want to experiment. Top of that, I also do not want an occult practitioner for a husband. I just don't, I don't want to be unequally yoked with, hey, but guys, I, I'm tired, y'all. Like, I'm just, I'm so exhausted. But, you know, this is the thing that's pursuing me. And I blame my ex-boyfriend because he did a spell to make sure that I contract HIV in the future. So maybe that's why all these HIV positive dudes are all up in my grill. I don't know like dude <laughs> i can't really say that your homosexual lifestyle made you contract the virus it was your sexual immorality that made you contract the virus because straight people catch it too you were just fornicating all over the show running rampant and you expected not to contract it i don't know why like i don't know why people live irresponsible sexual lives and don't anticipate that one day they might contract a virus like i just i don't know but herein lies the deal why are you so selfish why are you so selfish if you want children goodness you're a wealthy man adopt some make like uh who's this jamie fox in the movie annie these days they are they're not pedantic about you being married and stuff like they used to back in the day and so far as you can guarantee that the kid has got a stable home and all that jazz you as a single man can adopt a child if you want that whole picket fence look go on right ahead and grab yourself some adopted kids and raise them and love them as a single dad or you can still try and find a wife insofar as you will be content with your status which i am not for reasons i've highlighted above i did not wait 13 years to be sexually uncomfortable in a marriage because i'm busy out here consuming medication making sure that my husband doesn't give me a disease i don't want an hiv positive man i don't because i waited i waited i have not had sex for 13 years i'm not about to do it for the first time first of all using protection and secondly having consumed a whole bunch of medication i am not doing it i'm just not doing it i am not doing it right but there are women out there that are okay and are happy to basically take the precautions necessary if at all they are happy to humor you given that you're a wealthy man and money tends to make people look away from a lot of things find another woman repent give your life to christ and pray that the lord will enable you to love them as much as you loved me and then go on right ahead and make those babies that you want have the children adopt them i don't know but like if you want the picket fence you can still get it christ restores your hiv status is not the end of the world but it certainly is for me it's not for me it is a dead end where i'm concerned it is my deal breaker i am not the one for you but given that you've never been married before and you've never had children uh never mind never having tr had children but like given that you've never been married before according to god you're still pretty viable for marriage you are still marriable in the kingdom of heaven HIV does not count. It does not matter. There are ways around that. If a woman is happy to take you with it, then go. Make like Criselda Gananda. She was HIV, is HIV positive and married. That's what's good. So there are people that will embrace you with your status. I'm not one of them. I'm not one of them. I've just highlighted and I've communicated what in the world is going on. If you want the picket fence, if you want a normal life with a woman, because you, you, you don't want the gay lifestyle, especially now that you're like, what, in your 40s? how it, it, it just does not look good later on it does not age well homosexuality does not age well it's like cigarette smoking for black women i remember when i used to smoke as a teenage girl from the age of 17 
up until like maybe 21 or 22 my cousin got me into smoking and i remember telling her that right now we're teenage girls and it's cool for us to be puffing on cigarettes but it i've, I've always considered old black women older black women so tacky when they're still dragging on cigarettes i've always considered them so tacky especially when they're black that's what i said to my cousin so i quit cigarettes because i did not want to be a 45 year old woman smoking cigarettes having that horse cigarette voice and just being this like poosa face looking lady that's just always dragging on a cigarette at like 45 as a black woman it just doesn't suit us it looks a lot better on white women when they're older they yeah they just looked at the, yeah you get my point so i quit smoking because it was only cute when i was young especially the skinny thin ones that were minty and you would like cravenate like yeah i would smoke cigarettes like those menthol because they looked cute you got to look like whatever type thing but then they, they just don't match with getting older when, when you start getting wrinkles and stuff cigarettes don't look good on you so i quit when i was still young yeah and and the homosexual lifestyle is like cigarettes for a black woman they look they might look sort of kind of you know she's a rebel and she's having fun yeah when she's like 17 21 25 smoking cigarettes but then the moment she turns 38 and she's still dragging on those smokes girl you look tacky you look tacky and and homosexual lifestyles are like that i'm sorry it's like true like you might think that it's it's all fabulous and fun to be a lesbian when you're 17 like, fabulous and fun to be gay when you're 26 yeah but then when you start turning 45 when you start turning 50 and you are with another man in the house as a man or uh, another woman in the house as a woman and they, like that they, yeah they, it just it gets tacky with time there's a couple like that in this complex two gay men and they're both old it just looks so whack it looks whack but when they're still young all ripped with muscles and their shirts you know bulging you you be thinking hey that, that gay lifestyle is cute man they're so adorable look at the ha and then they get older and this dude saw that from the from the youth from what the lord showed me when he was still young he was like me with cigarettes he saw that this thing does not age well it does not age well and he wanted to quit it he wanted to get out of the gay lifestyle because it only worked out for as long as he was young and he was onto something he was right but unlike me he did not drop the cigarettes he didn't he did not drop the gay lifestyle he did not turn his life to jesus he did not repent altogether and now today now that he's a 40 something year old man he still wants that which is what he's always wanted he just wanted to be what he calls a regular guy he wanted to be just a regular man with a family a whole bunch of kids he wanted to get old with a woman he wanted you know the the, the nuclear family he wanted that that whole old school trad wife thing chilling because that's what always just looked normal to him even though he had these homosexual desires and god gave him a shot at a woman he fell in he fell for a chick when both of them were still lost in the world and he he decided he said he didn't run with it despite the fact that he was in and of himself very suspicious of the homosexual lifestyle from young from youth he was suspicious of it and when he did when he got a crush on a girl he didn't run with it the one girl that he had a crush on he didn't run with it <laughs> dude <laughs> I like that guy so much that even though I would have been uncomfortable with the fact that he's been with guys before, I might have accommodated him. <laughs> yeah, now he wants to rock up at 40 what? Like, I don't know. I told you guys that that guy was a 70-something kid. He was born late 70s. He wanted to then rock up now. And just, now that he's like, what, 44, 45, 46, 47, dude. You want to you wanna rock up and, and, and out your, just decimate a woman that you imagine ought to be desperate enough to just take you and everything that you have to throw in her direction in her stride she must just take you because she's still single at 39 ah, ah, ah. i'm sorry no i waited where it is that i quit the cigarettes you didn't quit the homosexual lifestyle is that basic you did not quit we were supposed to yeah but no mm -mm, no how oh, yeah but you know these people in the occult they 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 just they're so entitled they so but anyway this dude is prolific now in the kingdom and darkness he's prolific now he's gone quite big he is a leader of sorts in this kingdom and unlike all these other black men littered in these streets trying to divorce some women because they're frustrated or whatever and the next thing -na -na -na, they happen upon an innocent older woman on youtube Archie never been married trying to see if they can't slip into them dms this dude doesn't have any such stats and he's moneyed enough to apparently allegedly deceive me or whatnot but money's never been a motivator for me dude like let's just put that out there it's never been one coupled with the fact that i can't stand the occult and you're in the occult like just repent like give your life to jesus and see if he doesn't give you that wife and two and a half kids like you might still get it
you like you proper still could you like you could just not with me just not able to i'm rooting for, for this guy i'm rooting for him i'm thoroughly rooting for him i'm rooting for him because he's been conflicted since he was very young <laughs> but he didn't repent on time he's been conflicted since since, since he was young since oh baby while we're young making like Janae Aiko yeah he was conflicted from all the way back then he was awarded as many olive branches as possible and now he made me walk around these streets of Johannesburg like I'm a whole log with one footstep being like Godzilla ga, 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 ga. making it hard for me to exercise Ebatum and uh, pulling strings in his occult atmosphere to make me run to him if I ended up with that dude, goodness gracious, it's like, whoa, dude, like, I wanted you when we were still kids. Like, what is wrong with you? Like, <laughs> are you going to walk up all up in my grill now with some crow's feet and like some gray hairs on your beard and like tell me a story I don't want to hear and then basically put my life at risk of contracting HIV and on top of that, put my life at risk at all at all because you're in the occult you're in the kingdom of darkness you will manifest demons in the presence of a christian so i don't want to die <laughs> at your hands I, I don't want people manifesting killing me while they're blinded by demons and then waking up to realize that no but baby i don't want you to die baby please don't go don't go don't go baby please don't go that's how men in the occult kill their christian wives baby please don't go don't go don't go baby please don't go because you kill that woman frenzied by a trance in, in in some hard not demonic attack spell can't control your own demons and they end up just you know stabbing a woman seven times and then you snap out of it wake up with blood on your hands because you're so demon possessed and all you can sing is baby please don't go don't go don't this guy's gonna be like baby please don't go over my dead body i'm sorry i'm not marrying an occult man y'all ain't got no self-control you have no self control over and above the fact that christ said don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers you also are just so demon possessed that you can't control yourselves in the presence of especially a very heavily anointed called child of the living god that is born again you like yo stop fostering these things if you don't want to murder if you don't want to murder murder she won't yeah, yeah. A man I she wrote. It's a man around the dance floor. If you don't want to end up singing such songs as those, and then wearing like orange in some prison, mourning in prison the wife you killed, having not really planned to go out like that, like you didn't want to kill your wife, but you killed her anyway, and then you end up mourning after getting prosecuted, like you were out here in jail serving a life sentence for killing your wife. <laughs> And you are crying every day in prison that your wife is dead. You couldn't even attend the funeral. You killed her. <laughs> That's people in the account for you. Blinded by their demons. They end up committing atrocities, abominations. They kill their own family members in human sacrifice rituals. And then cry afterwards. Feel guilty. Wish they could turn back the hands of time like Arkel. Uh, tormented like Lady Macbeth with blood on their hands can't do anything to reverse the fact that a person's blood has been drained i'm not about to marry a man that's going to <laughs> deliberately or undeliberately directly or indirectly mistakenly or unmistakenly kill me coupled with the fact that i don't want to be careful sexually in a marriage i just want to be free with my husband so hey dude as in you passed me up like just leave me alone now you're all prolific in your hard knock mm -mm. give your life to christ harley like give your life to christ harley from temptation that's who you are now i'm not that girl i'm not your girl i'm not the girl of the guy from america i'm nobody's girl that is involved in the occult it's that basic the lord has a with swapes and pungas yeah the lord has exposed you dude so i my prayer is that you would repent it makes sense that you would have no children and having never been married you've you've lived a gay lifestyle pretty much all your life and now you're sick of it now it's, it's making you vomit okay well quit because indeed it's wrong you felt it from very long ago it was convicting you long ago that this year cannot last it's not sustainable long ago long ago but you didn't run with it back then run with it now then run with it now take the consequences of your actions and run with it because jesus ever took you know what you should do dude yeah there's this wo woman written off in god's word at the well that goes to get some water at the well and then jesus like preaches to her and heals her and all that stuff and this lady has got like multiple husbands and stuff like that 
and even the man that she was with at praise at that particular time was not her husband and jesus says to her uh you've got six husbands and even the one that you're with now is not your husband and this woman is like oh my goodness like how'd you know how'd you know how'd you know and she ends up repenting and then going to tell the whole world about jesus saying i have met a man who has told me everything about my life that was basically a woman living in some hard knock sin do you understand adulterous for days and all that it took for her to repent was christ accurately prophesying over her life all that it took was for jesus to basically identify her for exactly what she is what she was presently doing as at that date and it made her repent because she realized that he was the son of god she met a man who told her everything about her life make like the woman at the well i have prophesied your life <laughs> I have prophesied your life dude i have prophesied the fact that you did not like women well that wasn't really a prophecy i made speculations based on the stuff that i found out on youtube not youtube but facebook about you but I like the stuff about you have being apprehensive pretty much all your life about the gay lifestyle and how it doesn't age right that's not something i could have known and also the fact that i uh, also spoke about how it is that you are presently single you've never had children you've never been married uh if that's true which i doubt uh, which i uh, what is this which i imagine it is that's also facts that i would never have known i would never have known uh, the, the fact that even your the fact that you're contacting me you're not contacting me sorry but like you are stalking my channels so it's a sort of co contact you're stalking my youtube channel my blog all that jazz for years you've been watching me and i have been mum on what god has been showing me about you until i finally spoke about it yeah that is something that i also could not have known unless you actively made it clear that you were like that stalker peeping tom that i'm aware of and then your involvement in the occult how prolific you are in it as well the height the layer the rank the rank that you are in in the occult that's not something that i could have known and then, then if it all i was communicated that too by the god of the universe who has no, who has basically told you everything about uh what is this about your life you're like the woman at the well at this point you are without excuse you've got so much to run with that jesus christ is lord he's been calling you from long ago you've been running away from him from long ago he has been calling you and you've been fleeing it's about time that you finally downed tools on your darkness and eventually gave your life to god because some woman from long ago that you never imagined like proper could ever speak like this to you through the internet is thoroughly doing it like proper dude walk away don't even know how like proper from what i saw in my dreams you were actually expecting me to come to you i don't even know how in the world i would have done that expecting me to drive to you in my dream i drove to you in my in the second dream where there were all those cockroach those critters those spiders and everything all over the show again i fled to you it's like it's something that makes me somehow go to you i don't know how i would find you all i know are your names all of them but uh, what do you like must i dm you on linkedin like i would never do that i'm like, hey how are you doing like what, what do you want me to do you, you're not even decent enough at this point to shell on me <laughs> the, the manly way like ask a woman are you the men in the occult like i just you want women to follow you around tail you like uh, like goodness gracious like what in the world so arrogant like you put Corbella on a woman and then you expect the woman to come to you you don't even want to say hello baby what are you doing so beautiful do you want to give me number just in case you don't even go and actually pursue her you want her to come to you i don't know how many times i have heard god reverberating the song in my mind by charlie puth i'm only one call away i am here to save the day superman got nothing on me i'm only one call away i'm like what these people expect me to call them the guy in america it was just sitting there hoping that i'm gonna one day write him an email or something baby i miss you hey because he does witchcraft and somehow he's going to take me by the nose and lure me into his ecosystem my ex-boyfriend also did a charlie put spell i'm only one call away i'm here to save today this time around if you write me an email garabo i will i will definitely say hello baby it's been a minute i miss you you know it's been loved remember the other day the other time that we did this and that hey baby oh why did we break up <laughs> and now this guy from this it's like do you want me to call you i don't have your number i lost it if it's still the same one i don't have your email address it, the, 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 predict, the, the the email that would that remembers your email address was the mtn one i don't work there anymore i did not memorize your email address <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
maybe uh, not, i don't have email maybe it was the vitz email i don't know I, I, like how in the world what is going on with people in the occult like how are you gonna go and shell out a woman by luring her to you in a dream in a dream but anyway y'all might be thinking i'm making this stuff up but i am not god is my witness and one day he will vindicate me one day he will vindicate me this dude is all up in my grill like proper tick in a hair tick on a skull and i'm just like as in dude you have met a woman that has told you everything about your life because she's coming in the name of jesus christ this here is an olive branch if you still don't repent after so much prophecy has been spoken over you so much confirmation of stuff that you're involved in i don't know it's like you see you're sending yourself to the abyss to hellfire just because you think it's like pretty to swim in molten lava or something i don't know you're sending yourself to hell when you've got all the information under heaven that you need that Jesus Christ is Lord. You have met a woman coming in the name of a man who has told you everything about your life, your gay lifestyle, like the fact that you don't even like it and even your involvement in the occult, how prolific you are in that space and all these like random spells that you keep on doing like just i don't know what it would take for a person that deep in the kingdom of darkness to repent. I don't know because they tend to just be getting intimidated threatened like no man's business that if they leave it goes but i guess maybe that's the reason why god gave me so much prophecy with your life in order to give you a very compelling case for christ a very compelling one it had to be so compelling that it could get a prolific hard knock like high priest random like high ranking devil worshiper that is running entire satanic organizations to actually consider repentance to jesus christ it, yeah maybe that's why the lord told me so much stuff about you another song that god reverberated to me when i was in the shower today was um who is this guy who is this oki um uh sheeran ed sheeran um uh gingy how oh, mm, not that one not thinking out loud mm -mm. the the one um mm -hmm. yes i found love for me darling just dive right in follow my lead i found a girl and beautiful and sweet just went and, uh, and king no 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 i never knew that there was someone waiting for me because we were just kids when we fell in love not knowing what it was i will not give you up this time darling just hold my hand be my man i'll be your be my girl i'll be your man i i see the future in your eyes baby i am dancing in the dark with you between my arms barefoot on the grass listening to our favorite song when i saw you in that dress looking so beautiful i don't deserve you you are perfect okay so i have hopped all throughout that song from parts to parts yeah i met a girl i met a woman stronger than any girl i know she uh, she found my dreams and hope that one day i'll sh she said she shared my dreams and hope that she shared my dreams and hope that one day i uh, will share a home i found love to carry more than just my secrets to carry love to carry children of our own <laughs> i mean do you listen listen to those lyrics like <laughs> You go grab a beautiful song and make it so so incredibly entitled to a demonic agenda like baby i dancing in the dark with you between my arms i like that song it's it's a, it's actually a good song it's decent even for christians like <laughs> and by like the lyrics speak volumes god said that like he reverberated that song in my mind when i was taking a shower saying this is what is the the romanticizing of something very evil by these men and if you think about it i found love for you darling just dive right in follow my lead i found a girl beautiful and sweet yeah we were just kids when we fell in love not knowing what it was i will not give you up this time i'm not gonna give you up this time darling just hold my hand be my girl i'll be your man i see the future in your eyes baby i'm dancing in the dark with you between my arms a barefoot on the grass listening to our favorite song i have faith in what i see now i know i have met an angel i'm in person darling you are perfect da -da -da -ding. Do -do 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 -do. Da -da -da ding 
No, do, do, baby, I'm dancing in the dark. <laughs> don't make me laugh. I don't like you very much. <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> Mm -hmm. okay listen up those lyrics are catchy we get it it's a beautiful song if it was within the right context but this is this is like the activity of romanticizing something inc like incessantly diabolical like grabbing a whole virgin like woman frankly just bordering on being, being a virgin and just putting her together with the most prolific player of the community because apparently he is a recovered man from darkness and thinking that that's romantic no that is a short hand of the stick for the woman the woman is the one that gets the raw deal <laughs> baby i'm dancing romanticizing and then they say that i will not give you up this time hey, but when you passed me up you passed me up and for 10 years i've been suffering and the suffering has been induced even by some of you there is a guy in my complex that was come pursuing me once upon a time that didn't really work out okay um and i also had another vision where it is that these men are like fine if you don't want us all you'll have then to default to is the one guy that's still around and is happy to humor you if at all you will accommodate him y'all think that i'll never be seen by other men again y'all think that i'll never be loved again but then again like i said yesterday in the video that i did i am at the red sea about to cross and y'all are like pharaoh's soldiers trying to pursue me there you will get engulfed i am going to meet my man i am going to have my children and I am going to have that song by Ed Sheeran sung to me by a man who is responsibly actually singing it. If anything, highly unlikely, I'm probably not going to know or marry a man that knew me when I was a kid. Mm. Cause yeah, in that dream it was like, we were just kids when we fell in love. These are guys from back in the day. People from back in the day, men from history that fell in love with me, that I fell in love with, that I liked too, I guess. It was reciprocated when I was a kid, when we were kids. When we were in, pr the one dude, I met him literally when we were kids, like primary school, first love, the other dude, high school, and then varsity, and then early corporate, early adulthood. Yeah, like m people I met in my 20s, we were just kids when we fell in love and now we're middle-aged women and we're gonna romanticize that. Like like John Legend's song, I've been doing messages of this nature for a minute, okay? Ran into you yesterday, the memories rushed through my brain, it's starting to hit me, now you're not with me. I realize I made a mistake, I thought that I needed some space, but I just let love to go to waste. It's so crystal clear now, I need you here you know i gotta get you back today this time i want it all this time i want it all i'm showing you all the cards giving you all my heart this time i'll be a man this time i'll take a chance i will be what you need this time it's all of me I hit the bar every night, hoping to score a good time. I left empty handed. It's not like I planned it, cause I'm still alone in my mind. And now what will I what will it take to feel right? I cannot come see you tonight. Um, is there someone new now? What can I do now? Cause I need you back yeah. But my side this time I Yeah. Hmm. Lying alone in this room, all that is missing is you. Won't you, uh, uh, something, something, won't you come home? Da -da 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 -da. Just romanticizing rubbish. It's like you messed up the very first time. The whole, the John Legend song, reverberating over and over. The Ed Sheeran song it was all up in my world this, uh, this, this uh, evening when I was showering. And then there, there's the, the Jenna Jackson one. <laughs> again I, i've done videos about this before like i even did shorts out of one particular video where i was highlighting this <clears throat> that janet jackson song um i heard from a friend today and she said you were in town suddenly the memories came back to me in my mind how can i be strong i asked myself time and time i said that i'll never fall in love with you again don't bonk on don uh, uh can you hear we are alone again didn't think it'd come to these good intentions you had many i know you did da -da 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 -da. i've come too close to happiness to have it swept away 
do 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 whatever. Never fall again. Do 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 do. And say it just one time. Say it to me. Mm -mm. Relax, <laughs> guys. I'm old now. I miss Kokwane now. I, I ain't got no time for this. Like I'm too old to be getting tricked like a like an 18 year old girl. And and yet you're trying. I'm like 40 this year, just like y'all. Like. <laughs> I've come too close to happiness when Jen sang that song I think she was 25 like proper women still sing songs like those when they're 25 but when they're the age of Madonna it's like relax <laughs> you got like stop I'm old now I'm old but the the level of attack that is all up in my grow that's just unacceptable y'all you're gonna get swallowed by the Red Sea okay you're gonna get swallowed by the Red Sea I'm just saying like the attack is just exorbitant the dude from Vitz I'm sorry that your life went awry like this. I apologize that you went and contracted a virus. I apologize that for some strange reason you just could not break out of the lifestyle you knew you had to break out of. But this is your olive branch. Like take it, run with it and drop the very hard knock occult involvement. If they kill you for being involved in the occult, who cares? To live is Christ but to die is gain. Give your life to Jesus. Like he's been calling you for a minute. He would have given you a life abundantly if you had just abandoned that strange lifestyle. When he called you at just like, how old were you? Like what, 29, 30, 31? If you had just repented then, I don't know. I mean, look. Oh, was I going to leave my ex for you? I don't know. Yes, I was. <laughs> I was going to leave him. I already spoke about that. I was already frustrated with that dude. You were awarded an opportunity and olive branch and you're going to take it. All of these guys that I'm speaking to right now, all of them, they were given a shot, not just with me, but just generally in life. And they didn't take it. And now they're so full of regret. They're married to women that they don't love or they are sick and they wish they had not done certain things. They, there's just so much regret. And my thing is, yo, this world, YOLO, you only live once, you can also die twice. It's fleeting. And afterwards, there is an eternity to be embraced. Okay? You can either choose to let your regret make out of you a buffoon that is destroying the planet or you can basically repent and realize that your regret will literally be behind you at some point when you give your life to jesus like don't get old and be maintained in this nasty disposition you are presently very nasty just don't keep it up it's gross like it's thoroughly exquisitely gross like just ditch it it's this guy it's like a dead rat who keeps a dead rat hanging out sitting next to them at dinner ew like just kill the dead rat that is your wicked lifestyles and just embrace christ with whatever you have some of these guys are greedy they're selfish they're married they've got women that are viable in their lives that keep on popping babies for them repent and return to the breasts of the wife of your youth because at least you've got that this dude from Vitz doesn't even have that he's in a bad not in a bad bunch but he stands to gain it even with his status, if he gave his life to Christ, but these people don't be trusting God. It's just unfortunate. They'd much rather trust a python on their roof, cause by twelve guy, they would much rather trust uh, blood rituals and he sacrifice. Oh, like you are living with dead rats. Who does that? Who? Who has dinner right next to a dead rat? The Adams family. You're like Igor and Wednesday. Igor. I think Igor is the one that belongs to Frankenstein. It doesn't matter. You're like the Adams family. Da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da -da. Stop living such gothic lives. It's literally not worth it. Quit living with dead rats in your basements, your houses, your kitchens. When you open a cupboard, there's like one that's breathing its last bleeding out in a cup. Just stop. It's just not worth it. Anyway, I'm signing out in Christ's name. I've said enough. All this demonic attack, I will conquer. I am more than a conqueror. Amen. Aluta continua. But I'm not going to be going to some rubbish ex. Uh, that guy was not even my ex-boyfriend. He would have been at some point. He was going to cheat on me with men here. That dude, uh, uh, it's okay. God, God protected me. But like, you know of a man that told you everything about your life. His name is Jesus. Just repent. Stop living with some rats. Stop it. Fumigate. Get rat poison. Get rid of them in your house. I'm just saying. Bye.